or molestation of a child or a minor happens, it should not be treated as a family affair. Family members should stop settling out of court. Let the law take its course. When rapists walk away from their crime with no consequences for their actions, it emboldens them and exposes other women and children to rape. If Dr. Femi Olalaye, who was recently sentenced to jail in Lagos, served time in London for rape and assault, perhaps he would have been reformed. There's no begging for forgiveness in cases of rape. The rapist should face the maximum penalty for his action. Hello, amazing family. My name is Bosse Ujubo. How you doing? Welcome to another episode of Amazing Grace with Bosse. If this is your first time here, welcome on board. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Nigerians are reacting to the call by Justice Eberichi Wike, a judge of the Rivers High Court, for a law that will ensure convicted rapists found guilty are amputated of the body parts they used in committing the crime. Please watch. It's a very serious and sad situation because when you think about how children of six months, six years, sometimes less, are defiled, it's, it's heartbreaking. I don't know what we can do about this by way of legislation, but if you ask me, I will say without thinking that we should not just put those persons found guilty of such offenses, you know, in prison for life or for 14 years, we should do much more. I think we should do something that will be really drastic, that will make them think twice before they do that. And I cannot think of anything better than having legislation that whatever it is or whatever part of your body you use on the child while defiling the child, that part should be cut off. If it's your finger, if it's your mouth, if it's the private parts, I think men will take it more seriously when you come up with such a legislation. And it will take, I hope, a man in the House of Reps or in the um, Senate, in the National Assembly to sponsor a, a bill like that. And that will be a man who we will find to be faultless in that regard. He will not be a man found defiling children. Only a man like that can stand up. She's of the opinion that the current punishment is not drastic enough and she hopes that a bill will be passed that will deter sexual perverts. And I'm going to quote her. I cannot think of anything better than having legislation that whatever parts of your body you use on a child while defiling the child, that parts should be cut off. There's another video where a Nigerian legislator, Honorable Kazwari, talked about the need for a bill that would ensure that rapists are castrated. But it never saw the light of day. Please watch. I'm not recognized to contribute in the issue of uh, raping because I have something very important to tell our members, most especially members that against the decision of castration. If there is something above castration, a person that is ref, he deserves it. When you look at this, our country, the issue of rape every day is rising. And to be honest, look at some women have died in the, in the course of uh, rape. So that is why I intend to contribute in that issue so that we bring a bill, a fresh bill to this house concerning to amend the issues of uh, constitutional issue on rape to fix a highly, highly... Some people say it's barbaric. Some say, it's okay. Please pause 
for a minute and imagine this happened. A two-year-old girl that you know is raped and violated by a 42-year-old man and her vagina is damaged for life. If you're given the choice to choose the punishment for this sexual pervert and as proof beyond reasonable doubt that he committed the offense, will you rather he goes to jail for 14 years and comes out a free man after serving the sentence and go on to live a full life? Or will you rather his genitals is cut off in addition to the 14 years imprisonment? Be honest. Which will you choose? It's easy for people to say that it's barbaric and that is because it's not your daughter or sister that is involved. Do you know that Africa has the highest percentage of child sexual abuse, around 34.4%? UNICEF in 2015 reported that one in four girls and one in 10 boys in Nigeria have experienced sexual violence before the age of 18. These are only reported cases. The numbers are more. We have a serious problem in our hands. Quite often when we hear rape, we just think someone holding a knife or a gun and forcing their victim to have sex. Yes, that happens. But that is not always the case. People have to understand that rape happens in different ways. A doctor who sleeps with his patients while they are asleep has raped his patient. A lecturer who subtly threatens his student to have sex with him or else will not graduate or get good grades is a rapist. A boss who sleeps with his staff or subordinates with the threats of no promotion is a rapist. If it's sex for employment, you are a rapist. Anybody who uses his influence, power, and money to lure, entice, and forcefully have sexual relations with any person is a rapist. If there's a form of threat or intimidation whatsoever, no matter how subtle, it is rape. What this means, therefore, is that there are many rapists walking around who are supposed to be in jail. Dr. Femi, the 57-year-old Nigerian medical doctor who was sentenced to life imprisonment for sleeping with his wife's niece, and patient is one of those so-called big men who were walking around pretending to be responsible citizens. I'll put a link above for you to watch the episode where I gave details of how his wife reported him to the police which led to the investigation and uh, subsequent conviction. There are many lessons from Dr. Femi Olalaya's story. One, if you have a patient in the hospital and the person needs to be sedated, make sure you get someone to be around. The news that some doctors, some, I guess a few, are sleeping with their patients is true. Dr. Femi slept with his patients while they were sedated in Nigeria and even in England. So, be warned. Dr. Femi's wife has paved the way for women not to be ashamed or embarrassed to report and expose family members or anybody at all who is a rapist or a pedophile. Three, check and ask serious questions before you marry anybody. If Remy or Lanaye had known the truth that her husband was a serial rapist and lost his job because of sexual misconduct in London, I'm sure she would never, never have married him. Four, 
do not assume that your children or children in your care know the right thing to do. You must have conversation with them about things that may happen and what they should do if it happens. Talk to them about likely threats from abusers and receiving of unnecessary gifts and presents and what they must do if it happens. Five, be extra vigilant in your home. Put your ears to the ground. You can't be too careful. Observe the moods of people who live with you. If there are any attitudinal changes, serious red flags, make sure to investigate. Finally, I, I think it's important that we look at aspects of our culture and tradition that no longer serves us. That culture of silence that has held women captive, that tells them to turn the other way while evil is being perpetrated should be thrown away. It's unfortunate that one of the problems we have in our society is being able to prove cases of rape beyond reasonable doubt. There's need therefore to create awareness and sensitize citizens on how to manage cases of rape and for them to know that it is not their shame to carry. Every police station should have a sexual assault desk with trained and qualified police nurses and counselors dedicated to handling cases of defilements of minors and cases of rape. We, we hear of cases where rape victims are further victimized, abused and embarrassed by security personnel asking sexual assault victims stupid questions like, what were you wearing? Why did you go to his house? Really? There's no reason on earth whatsoever to justify rape. Also, there's the need for heavy sensitization and collaboration with our religious leaders, market leaders, to create awareness. We need to also have special curriculum suitable for pupils and students depending on their age and class that we address these social issues. It's important to catch our children young and teach them about the human body and cases of sex that may happen to them and how they should manage it. Parents and teachers and the entire community need to rally around and support victims of sexual assault to get justice. Finally, I want to say that the only reason why I hesitate to support amputation or castration 100% is because of human error, especially if the evidence has to do with identification of a person. I fear that an innocent person may be accused wrongly and convicted. But if there is 100% human and forensic proof that a man defiled a child or raped somebody, why not? They should have something that they can look at the rest of their lives to remind them of their crime. Perhaps it may just serve as a deterrent and reduce the cases of child defilement and rape in our society. It's a wrap. That's our show for today. Bye-bye.